Licensed properties leading the list. Not even Marvel or DC. Let's get into it. The hottest comic books in the cosmos. Hit the like and subscribe button and gem. Why do you dish them up a little of number 10? And speaking of which, we're going to start with the Cosmos. Number 10 on the list is Silver Surfer issue one. We've been seeing a lot of these big premiere issues make the list in the last couple of weeks. Those first appearances may be getting out of reach, so it's the next best thing. Not only is this the first ongoing Silver Surfer series, origin of the Silver Surfer and of the Watchers, but it's the first appearance of Shalabal. Shalabal, where soars the Silver Surfer? There must he soar alone. This is the first time we hear Silver Surfer say this quote, and it's Stanley jumbled up way. We have multiple grade points performing better than their recent 12 months. The 1.0 hitting 295 this past week is up 29%. The 1.5 hitting 350 is 3% over its recent 12 month average. The low grades are making all the noise on this book. The 2.0 sold for $505, 16% above its 12-month average. Now, there is a pretty large total census count, but it makes more sense once we get to the higher grades. 5,221 total slabs, which includes 27.5s. But when you move up to those high grades, 216 9.0s, 106 9.2s, 97 9.4s, and 39 9.6s, which the last sale in June of this year was 36,000. And then we look at the 9.8, where there's only nine copies that exist. The last GPA sale was back in 2016 clearly doesn't come up publicly often and it sold for less than the recent 9.6 sale at $33,000. Imagine if one of these nine copies were to surface this year. We may see Silver Surfer, but we know we have the Fantastic Four coming very soon. Great time to spec if you ask me. Looking at the list at number nine, we have Incredible Hulk 102, another premiere issue. That's right, this book was formerly Tales to Astonish, and after issue 101, it was renamed The Incredible Hulk with issue 102. Debuting in 1968, we have 6.0s and 7.5s, exceeding their 12-month average by 8%, a 7.0 selling for $360, 7% above its 12-month average, and then the 9.0, which just sold for $975, 17% above its 12 month. There are 95 copies graded on the census at a 9.6, last selling for $3,800. April of this year, there are 25 9.8s in existence, last selling in February of 2021 for $5,500. Next at the list, at number eight, Tales to Astonish 93, debuting in 1967, an iconic cover done by Marie Severin, a classic battle of the Hulk versus the Silver Surfer. We're not done talking about Norn Rad. Not only is it a classic battle, but it's the first time we see Silver Surfer outside of the Fantastic Four title. Seems like collectors are specking on Silver Surfer and the Incredible Hulk. We have a 5.5 that's outperforming its 12-month average by 6%, selling for 272. The 6.0 hit 310 this past week. That's 7% over its recent 12 months. The 9.0 hit 1290, and that's 10% over its recent 12 months. And then the 9.2 selling for $1,899, 8% above its 12-month average. Not only does this have a classic cover that could potentially be recreated in the MCU, there's also a backup Namor story where he encounters a giant octopus briefly, but doesn't interact with it. Yeah, Namor has this very strange battle with this antagonist who's like a skinny version of the thing i digress because he does meet this octopus but that's for another time another hour we shall clash but not today if you enjoy what we do support the show by downloading the best comic app in existence key collector comics utilize code tom 101 to unlock a free two-week subscription of an app that's going to better your comic hunt you're speculating just overall learnings about funny books it's where we source the data to make these videos. You can actually see the list before the video comes out. And personally, I've started using Key Collector on my hunts. It's been such a benefit to just be able to look up an issue and find out whether it's a key or not. And what's this at the list at number seven? A repeat offender that hit number one on the list last week. But this week we have Marvel Premiere 47 at number seven, debuting in 1979. 
First appearance of Scott Lang in costume as Ant-Man and his daughter Cassie Lang who later becomes Stature and then Stinger who's going to be a main focal point of Ant-Man and Wasp 3 Quantumania. Now there are 3,017 slabs on the CGC census, 18 more since it was number one last week. Hit the like and subscribe, we're keeping track of that census count for the comic fam. Ant-Man 3 slated for February 17th feels like such a different vibe, does it not? Like Ant-Man 1 and 2 was such a great break from like the daunting cosmic threat that Thanos was. And we're getting Kang in the third movie. I like it that they're making Ant-Man and Wasp 3 matter. You can't skip this one. We want to see Kang evolve into the big bad villain of the MCU. And you're right. During the time when Ant-Man 1 and 2 came out, we had Avengers Infinity War and we had Endgame. But we haven't had those types of movies in a while. So it's nice to see it in this Ant-Man film. The 6.5 hit 123 this past week, 4% over its recent 12 months. The 8.5 hit 183, 10% over its recent 12 months. I'll remind the community about the 9.8 record-breaking sale last week, which is causing a trickle-down effect on across multiple grade points. Yeah, that 9.8 broke record selling for 2400 pushing the 9.2 and 9.6 2% above their 12-month averages, selling for 252 and 504 respectively. I want to hear what the community thinks about Ant-Man and the weight that this movie is going to have on the MCU at large at the list at number six. Iron Man number one. This is the first ongoing title series featuring Iron Man, the origin of Iron Man. And this is a big premiere issue. The third big premiere issue on this very list. How do you feel about that? I'm really liking it. No, I like it that these books are getting the love that they deserve. It might not be the first appearance, not even the second or third in some cases, but it's their first ongoing series, which would go down hundreds of issues. We have a CGC 4.0 selling for $552, just 1% above its 12-month average, but still showing strong sales. A 5.0 selling for $750, 9% above its 12-month, and a 6.5 selling for $950, 4% above its 12-month average. The 9.0 hit $3,725 this past week. The book was trending near the $3,000 marker for an increase of 18%. We also have a brand new set of comics added to the census over the last couple weeks because this book landed on the hot 10 at number three two weeks ago, and there have been an increase of 40 slabs added to the census. However, none of them above a 9.0. I hope they're sending them over to Hero Restoration first to get a press and a clean before going to CGC. Yo, shout out HR Comics. Hero Restoration is the second main sponsor of the channel. But I digress. We love you, Mike DeCellis, at the list at number five. Avengers number nine. We have the first appearance of Wonder Man. We're seeing a 333% increase in copies sold this week over last because we just got our Wonder Man casted. Yahya Abdul-Mateen II has just been announced as our Wonder Man. You know him from being the star of Candyman. Absolutely killed it. Highly recommend that horror movie. But he also portrayed Dr. Manhattan. Seeing this casting for Wonder Man has got me so stoked. More than the synopsis, which is going to focus in on a struggling actor and the first struggling actor in the MCU. You know we're talking about the original Mandarin. Shout out Trevor Slattery. We have a CGC 1.8 that hit 165 in September. Up 11% now for an all-time high, record-breaking sale of $183. The 2.0 is trending 11% over its recent 12 months, selling for $240 this week. The 4.5 hitting $425 is up 10%, and the 7.5 hitting $1,125 is 9% over its recent 12 months, where it was comfortably above the $1,000 marker. We got to start keeping an eye on this book. There are 1,412 slabs listed on the CGC census. We like to show the love to the 0.5s, eight copies on the census, 36 9.0s, 23 9.2s, which last GPA sale in June of this year hit six grand. 9.4, there are 13 copies and just seven copies of the 9.6. Last selling in 2019 for $9,401. There's only one 9.8, but there's no GPA data on that one single book at the list at number four. Talk about some great potential spec and buy-in opportunity. Swamp Thing number one, debuting in 1972. The first appearance and origin of the second Swamp Thing, Alec Holland. 
Another big premiere issue, although this time not for Marvel, but from DC. It's the first solo ongoing Swamp Thing title with a slew of key worthiness. The first cameo appearance of Anton Arcane, who would be a longtime nemesis of Swamp Thing. First appearance of Matt Cable, who would later become Sandman's Raven. It's the first cameo appearance of the Unmen and the first appearance of Nathan Elry, the person who caused the explosion that created Swamp Thing. Multiple grade points that are trending higher than their recent 12-month average and a lot of spec on anything James Gunn with his new position at DC may touch. However, so much focus on the funny. You know, Booster Gold, Plastic Man, which I'm all into, but keep in mind, his first major movie was Slither, a horror movie. The dude wrote the screenplay for Dawn of the Dead, which was directed by Zack Snyder, propelling his career, which is now in line with what James Gunn has been up to. There's so much potential for DC horror, Justice League, Dark, Swamp Thing in general. We have four strong performing sales to report on. A CGC 6.5 sold for $200, 21% above its 12-month average. The 8.0 sold for $319, which is 19% above its 12-month average. The 8.5 selling for $375 this past week. The 9.4 selling for $875. Both grade point averages up 12% over their recent 12-month averages. Now at the list at number three, we have Man Thing number one, one of the hottest books in the world for over six weeks consecutively. And another number one issue, but Man-Thing 1 has been riding this list for a while now. First, with the hype leading up to Werewolf by Night, then the success of the show having the book continually show up after. A CGC 6.5 sold for 123, 4% above its 12-month average. The 8.5 sold for 183, which is 10% above its 12-month average. Then we have a 9.2 and 9.6, both 2% above its 12-month, selling for 252 and 504. As of the date of this filming, it's been a full month since Werewolf by Night, which is such an amazing thing because this book has made it on the Hot 10 for eight weeks straight. This is hot as hell for good reason. However, it's worth noting that most of the time when we see a new character introduced, it spikes up a set of comic books. Sure, but we tend to see them cool off soon after because there's always something else coming, another big reveal. The attention gets refocused, but not with Man-Thing. In fact, the heightened focus on the horror is established and is persisting. And the fact that it's maintaining the top five on the Hot 10 list, coming in at number three this week, it was number two last week, and there actually are 14 more slabs on the CGC census since we reported on this last week, now giving it a total of 1,100 even. If you want to support the show, join the mystery mail call. Give me an excuse to send you comics every single month. We've teamed up with Carnivore Comics to get one trade dress version of the reprint of Batman Beyond, the first appearance of Terry McGinnis, done by Gabriel Del Otto in every single box. ComicTom101.com to join the community. Support what we do. And now we are going to talk about two comic books, the hottest books in the world. And neither of them are superhero. Neither of them are from Marvel or DC. Hot damn. Number two on the list, we have Star Trek issue number one, and there's like no hype to this book. Back in February, Paramount was securing actors for the film, but in September, we learned that they lost their director, Matt Shackman, to Fantastic Four. With the franchise on Rocky Foundation right now, this is a great chance to secure a major IP, the first adaptation of the popular TV series Star Trek number one and there's only one 9.8 that exists there's a lonely 772 slabs on the census count and we talked about this book early October October 3rd specifically and since then there's been an added 12 copies to the census and we have two record-breaking sales for this book a CGC 4.0 which sold for $530 back in September up 9%, now selling for $579, and a CGC 9.6, which sold for $20,400 back in 2019, up 124%, now selling for $45,600. 45K hot damn. Comic fam, there's only one 9.8 in existence of this book, and it last sold in 2015 for $40,500. Someone would have had to have been waiting for years for 
anything high grade to come up. There's only five copies graded at a 9.6. Six between both of those two grade points gives reason to the 124% uptick at the list at number one. Hit the like and subscribe. A comic book leading the list that I never suspected would make it this high up, but because of the low census count, it makes sense. Scooby-Doo number one, debuting in 1970, the first appearance of scooby dooby doo in comic books. So we do have the Velma show in production, and we also have a renewed interest of beloved cartoon characters first appearing in comic books. Now, there is a debate on the first appearance of Scooby-Doo in comics. Some will say Golden Comics Digest issue 7, but that's a one-page puzzle activity game and not a story. There's a total of 321 copies graded on the census of the first appearance of Scooby-Doo in comics. But when we look at the census count and we compare it to a major blue chip grail, Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man, the numbers are shocking. As it pertains to 9.8s, neither exist for either book. So now we're at the 9.6. There are zero 9.6s of Scooby-Doo's first appearance. However, there are four 9.6s of Spider-Man's first appearance. In the 9.4, this is the highest graded copy that exists for Scooby-Doo's first app, and there are two copies in existence versus six copies graded at a 9.4 for Spider-Man. For 9.2s, Scooby has seven copies in existence versus four for Spider-Man, so there's less of that particular grade. But in a 9.0, there is one in existence for Scooby-Doo and 11 for Amazing Fantasy 15. And we have record-breaking sales to report on. A CGC 3.5 broke records twice. It broke the 2021 comic boom record of $627, first selling for $700, which is a 12% increase, and also selling for $750, putting it 20% above that all-time record high. So there are only nine copies graded at a 9.2 or above for Scooby-Doo's first appearance. And one 9.2 came to market this past week, last selling in 2020 for $6,000 for an increase of 110%. The all new price of $12,600 was met this past week, hot damn. And speaking of the Velma show, we got a star-studded cast here. We have Mindy Cowling from The Office, who's portraying Velma. Glenn Howerton from It's Always Sunny, portraying Fred. Constance Wu is portraying Daphne. And Sam Richardson, you know him from I Think You Should Leave, is going to portray Shaggy. I want to know your thoughts about Scooby-Doo leading the list this week. And, as always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said. Join myself and this guy, Jem. You going nuts on whatnot. That's right. Not only do I kick off Whatnot Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, but I took on Minty Fresh Mondays and Minty Fresh Fridays so I could be on Whatnot three times a week. I'm doing a new show with Ryan every Tuesday. Of course, we have Whatnot Wednesday with Heron Heavens at 5 p.m. We do dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long doing the best deals on the internet for comics. We are seeing prices go for ridiculously cheap. We're hooking up the fam on a weekly basis. Come join us. Link's in the description. And we have two other videos for you to check out. We made them for you. Enjoy. Have a good week.